Wow, it's truly an honor to be here with all of you. Today I want to share with you why I believe that most entrepreneurs are slowly killing themselves. If you're an entrepreneur, my intention is to help you achieve greater results in your business by consistently performing at a higher level, by being a lot less stressed out, and by having more fun on your entrepreneurial journey. If you're not an entrepreneur, but you consider yourself to be a hard worker in your job, I still think a lot of these principles will apply to you. Entrepreneurs are a fascinating breed of people. They're some of the most passionate and driven people in the world. And oftentimes, they're also some of the most obsessive and out-of-balance individuals you'll ever meet. <laughs> now, this combination can lead to world-changing innovation and incredible beauty, and unfortunately, it can also lead to a lot of suffering and self-destruction. Now, here's where this gets interesting. This personality issue that most entrepreneurs have to deal with is strongly compounded by a very dangerous social issue. In North America today, the social narrative of entrepreneurship tells us that to be successful, we have to be willing to sacrifice our health, our relationships, and even our emotional well-being. Simply put, we got to pay the price if we're going to be successful. And when we look at some of the most successful and the most influential role models of entrepreneurship today, it's pretty interesting what we see. Let's look at Elon Musk, for example. Elon Musk is the poster boy for world-changing entrepreneurship. Over the last year, he's co-founded some extraordinary companies like PayPal, SpaceX, and Tesla. And he's done so by proudly working 100 hours per week. In a recent interview, when asked what advice he would give to aspiring entrepreneurs, Elon said, just work like hell. You just got to put in 80 to 100 hours per week, week after week. Now, to put this in perspective, to work 80 hours a week, you have to work from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. nonstop for six days a week. And if you're really courageous and you want to work 100 hours a week, you're looking at six days a week doing 8 a.m. till 12.30 a.m. That's past midnight. Now, that certainly doesn't lead a lot of time for things like sleep and exercise and spending time with loved ones, which ironically enough are all activities that have been shown scientifically to increase our happiness and our work performance. And working this much can lead to a whole slew of problems. In the case of Elon, there's a darker side to his story that not a lot of people know about. He's only 42, and he's already divorced twice, and he admits that he spends very little time with his five children, and that when he's with them, he's often responding to email. Now, I'm not here to judge Elon's lifestyles or decisions, but I do believe that before we start to glorify or emulate someone, we should look at the whole picture, not just their highlight reel. And I know this from experience. The extreme pursuit of my entrepreneurial dreams almost destroyed me, twice. And over the last 12 months, I figured out a way to have greater results in my business, not by pushing harder and working more, but by actually working less, by having more fun and enjoying my life a lot more. I realized that the dichotomy between achieving my greatest dreams and enjoying my life in this moment was actually a false one. And that for people like me and many other entrepreneurs who have an overachieving personality, taking more time to relax and appreciating life more can be the greatest catalyst to bigger results. For some of you, this might sound crazy and like too good to be true. So let me tell you how I came to this realization. Three years ago, I launched my first business, and my intention was to help people build better habits, improve their mindset, and do more extraordinary things with their life. At first, I was super enthusiastic. I was having the time of my life, and you know, this was really fun. But as I became more successful, and as the business grew, my workload increased, and so did the complexity of my life. So, not knowing what to do, I decided to see what other successful entrepreneurs were doing, to see you know, if I could learn from them. When I found out that Mark Zuckerberg spends routinely 16 hours a day at the Facebook office, I figured he was probably a good example to follow. I mean, things have worked out pretty well for him last few years. So from that point on, whenever I ran into a problem, I would just unleash my inner Zuckerberg and throw more hard work at the problem. I figured if I could just be a little bit, you know, work a little bit harder, be a little bit more productive, then all my problems would go away, my business would thrive, and then I would be happy. Well. Let me tell you, that approach did not work at all. <laughs> Within a few months, I'd run myself into the ground. I was stressed out of my mind, and I felt like there must be something wrong with me because I just wasn't able to work as much as Mark Zuckerberg. 
Now, to make things worse, here I was running a business called the Feel Good Lifestyle <laughs> while feeling stressed out and exhausted. As you can imagine, I was a little bit out of integrity and I hated that. So I decided to do things differently. I decided to give myself, to do a little experiment. I gave myself a 30-day work less challenge. For 30 days, I intentionally spent less time working and I reallocated the extra time to doing things like spending time with my friends and going in nature and going on more dates with amazing women. <laughs> now, as you can imagine, it was a very enjoyable month. <laughs> and lo and behold, something unexpected happened. My business had its most profitable month ever by more than 45%. How? Well, for one, because I wasn't working all the time, I had a lot more mental clarity. I was able to see opportunities clearly and act on them decisively. My creativity was on a whole new level. I had some of my best ideas ever, and my team and I were able to execute on them a lot faster. I learned to build systems, I learned to delegate more, and I learned to focus on a few things that actually mattered. Over the next few months, I was on this amazing trajectory and things were going really well. And then, something interesting happened. Because things were going so well, more opportunities came my way, I said yes to more things, and before long, I was falling back in my old patterns. We're working on all these exciting opportunities, we're making such rapid progress that all I wanted to do was work more. I was addicted to the dopamine rush I got from crossing things off my to-do list. And I was totally high off of the idea that I was achieving my biggest goals. But before long, the high began to fade. And I started to feel like all I was doing was run around all day trying to keep 300 balls in the air. Deep down, I knew I wanted to take a break. But I was terrified that if I did, the whole thing would fall apart and my business would crumble. Here I was, this successful young, young entrepreneur, suffocating under the weight of my own ambitions. I didn't know what to do, so I just reverted back to my old MO. I threw more hard work at the problem, hoping it would solve everything. Well, I didn't. One day in the midst of all this chaos, I decided to go to a sensory deprivation tank. Now, for those of you who don't know, a sensory deprivation tank is a tank that's half full with water with a lot of salt, where you can actually float on top of the water in total, in total darkness and total quietude. It's a great place to relax and to do some deep reflection. That day, when I laid down to float, I immediately felt this immense wave of fatigue surge through my body. I felt it all. All the stress, all the pressure, all the discipline I'd imposed upon myself in my quest to build the next great company, I felt it. And in that moment, the dam just broke. I started crying uncontrollably. For the next 30 minutes, I just laid there, butt naked in the dark, <laughs> crying my heart out, with no idea what the hell was happening to me. I wasn't even sad. I was just completely exhausted and emotionally drained. For the last three years, I'd pushed myself so hard. I'd taken on so many challenges, and I'd overcome so many of my fears and insecurities along the way, but I'd never given myself the time or the permission to actually recover from all this madness. It's funny, looking back, this whole time I thought I was doing such a great job, when in reality, what I was actually doing was slowly killing myself. And I know I'm not the only one. I was like the athlete who's so motivated and training so hard for the Olympics that he ends up overtraining and injuring himself. Sometimes we can have the best intentions in the world, but the extreme pursuit of our dreams ends up destroying us physically, mentally, and emotionally. So in that moment, I knew I needed to radically alter my approach to entrepreneurship. So I slowed down. I temporarily scaled down parts of the business, and I started asking myself the big questions like, who am I? Why am I doing all this, and what do I really want? I scrapped the whole master plan, and I decided to give myself time to realign with my purpose and with my soul's desires. I decided, to, I decided to stop treating myself like a machine and accept the fact that I'm just human, and sometimes I just need to chill out, just like everybody else. I decided to stop obsessing about the future and about these big goals I had in mind, and to start appreciating all the beauty that's in my life right now. And I made a very critical change to my mindset. I let go of the idea that the amount of success I get is directly correlated to the number of hours I worked. I just let that go. 
And then magic started to happen. If we zoom out of entrepreneurship for just a second and we look at different fields, we can get, we can get a very different perspective what, on what it takes to achieve sustainable, extraordinary performance over time. Let's look at elite athletes, for example. In a 12-month year, elite athletes go through four seasons. They have the preseason slash training camp, they have the regular season, they have the playoffs, and then they have the off-season. We never question the fact that the best athletes in the world take four months off a year to recover and build themselves back up for next year. But if an entrepreneur was to do that, we would think they're crazy. Let's look at rock stars. Now, they operate in a very different way. They're not concerned about working slow and steady long hours. The way they structured their life is that they prepare for their performance, they perform, and then they recover. What would happen if as entrepreneurs, instead of working all these long hours, we looked at our life in terms of preparing for performance, performing brilliantly for just a few hours, and then recovering until our next performance? What would that do for our business? And finally, if we look at artists like painters, they're not obsessed about their productivity and how many hours they work. What they focus on is on getting in a state of alignment and flow so that their greatest work can emerge. What would happen if as entrepreneurs, we weren't so obsessed with the volume of our output and the number of hours we put in the office, and instead, we focused on creating the most amazing, beautiful work? What would that do? To give you an example of these principles in action, this month, my business is well on its way to having a nugget record month in profit. But we didn't do it by hustling harder and pushing more. I actually spent the first week of the month on a sailing trip off the coast of California with my friends, totally disconnected from work. Actually, the only productive thing I did was write this talk. And the second week of the month, I worked about 30 hours. And yet, we're achieving greater results than ever. And it's a lot easier. And that feels really good, especially after all the hard work. Now, I don't have all the answers, and this is a highly personal topic. It's different for me and you and everybody else. Maybe for Elon Musk, working 100 hours a week really is optimal. Or maybe he's not succeeding because of his crazy work schedule, but rather, in spite of it. Maybe Elon could be doing even better. I don't know. But what I do know is that one of the most important traits of successful entrepreneurs is that we constantly test our assumptions. So let me ask you this. What is your current assumption about the correlation between the number of hours you work and the amount of success you'll have? Do you believe that you have to push yourself to the limit each week in order to reach your goals? Or is it possible that maybe if you slow down a little bit, if you give yourself more time to rest, to reflect, and to recover, not only you'd be happier and healthier, but your business would be better as well? If you think there's even a remote chance that that might be the case, I think we should test it. So here's my invitation to you. For the next 30 days, and starting on Monday morning, give yourself a 30-day work-less challenge. Whatever amount of work you're currently doing, scale it down by 25%. So if you're currently working 80 hours, scale it down to 60. <laughs> yeah. And if you're working 60 hours, take it down to 45. And then start to track the results. Look at the qualitative metrics, like how you feel and how creative and productive you're being, and look at the hard data, the quantitative metrics, like your profit and your revenue, and see what happens. Worst case scenario, you'll have a really fun month, you'll get to experience life in a whole different way, and you'll be a lot more rested by the time you get back to the regular schedule next month. <laughs> but best case scenario, you realize that this whole time you've been the victim of a broken social narrative and that you could actually be more successful by working less. How cool would that be? A lot of successful entrepreneurs are starting to make that shift from Yvon Chouinard from Patagonia to Tim Ferriss and even Ariana Huffington. Maybe it's time for you to make that shift as well. Whatever you decide to do, whatever you decide to do, here's the bottom line. Entrepreneurship does take a lot of hard work, and there's always going to be phases where we need to sprint and put in longer hours. But trying to stay in beast mode all the time is one of the most destructive things we can do for our health, for our relationships, and for our business. I sincerely believe that now more than ever, the world needs its entrepreneurs to shine if together we're going to overcome some of the world's biggest problems. 
But this isn't going to happen when entrepreneurs are constantly exhausted and just running on fumes all the time. It's going to happen when entrepreneurs who are inspired and energized because they're aligned with the natural rhythm of their body. So here's the good news. From what I've learned, you don't need to work yourself to death to succeed. But what you do need to do is find the optimal recipe for you so that every day you can bring your greatest work to life and so that you can feel totally and fully alive on the path to achieving your greatest entrepreneurial dreams. Thank you.